Uh, our next speaker is Kanan Malik, writer, broadcaster, and, and, and lecturer. And he will be speaking on uh, what's wrong with multiculturalism. So immediately over, over to you. Thanks, Rumi, and uh, thanks for, uh, to Miriam and, and the organisers for inviting me here. It's a, it's a pleasure to be speaking here. I want to talk about multiculturalism, um, and I'll be echoing some of the earlier points that um, Ellen made in her talk. But when we talk about, before we can talk about multiculturalism, we need to distinguish what we mean by it. Because in most discussions about multiculturalism, there are two issues that are always conflated or, or, or confounded. On the one hand, the lived experience of diversity, and on the other, multiculturalism as a political process or a set of political policies, the aim of which is to manage that diversity. The experience of living in a society that's less insular, uh, more vibrant, more cosmopolitan, is clearly something we would all defend and promote. But as a political process, Multiculturalism has come to mean something very different. It describes a set of policies, um, the aim of which is to manage and institutionalize cultural diversity through the public recognition and affirmation of such diversity, and by putting people into ethnic and cultural and faith boxes, by defining public policy according to the boxes into which people have been put, and by defining people's needs according to the boxes in which they find themselves. The idea of diversity as, as lived experience is an argument for open borders and open minds. The argument for multiculturalism as a political process is an argument for closure of borders, of minds, of imagination. And I think it's, it's this conflation of lived experience and multiculturalism as a political process is highly invidious. On the one hand, it has allowed many on the right, and, and not just on the right, to blame uh, minorities for social problems. And on the other, it has allowed many on the left and liberals to deny, to jettison classical liberal beliefs in free speech, in, in liberties and so on, in the name of tolerance and diversity. And my view is that it's critical to defend diversity as lived experience and all that goes with it, such as mass immigration and cultural diversity. And it's an important point to make because many who are, call themselves secularists, call themselves atheists, who oppose religion, often also oppose, say, mass immigration on the grounds that you need it uh, 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 to defend uh, a secularist uh, uh, society. And that's, that kind of argument is becoming more and more heard today, and we do need to challenge that. But at the same time, we also need to oppose multiculturalism as a political process, and the demand that we must recognize, affirm, institutionalize cultural differences in the public sphere. The irony of multiculturalism as a political process is that it undermines much of what is valuable about diversity as a lived experience. When we talk about diversity, what we're saying is that the world is a messy place. It's full of clashes and conflicts, and that's all for the good. Because it's out of such clashes and conflicts that political and, and, and public and cultural engagement emerges. Diversity is important, it seems to me, not in and of itself, but because it allows us to expand our horizons, to compare and contrast different values and beliefs and lifestyles, make judgments upon them and decide which may be better and which may be worse. It's important, in other words, because it allows us to engage in political dialogue and debate that can create a more universal language of citizenship. But it's precisely such dialogue and debate 
and the making of such judgments that multiculturalism as a political process attempts to suppress in the name of tolerance and respect. The very thing that's valuable about diversity, the clashes and conflicts that it brings about, is what multiculturalists most fear. And this brings us, I think, to a second irony about multiculturalism. Multiculturalism insists that society is diverse, but somehow fail to see the diversity of minority communities. You know, on the multicultural map, diversity magically ends at the edges of a minority community. So they treat minority communities as if each were distinct, singular, homogenous, authentic wholes, each composed of people all speaking you know, with a single voice, each defined primarily by a single view of culture or faith. And in so doing, they ignore the conflicts within those communities. Um, all the dissent and diversity simply gets washed away. And as a result, the more progressive voices become uh, silent, while, uh, because they're not seen as uh, truly of that community or truly authentic. While the most conservative voices get celebrated as community leaders, the authentic voices of such communities. The um, Danish MP, um, Nasser Hadda, um, tells us a conversation he had with um, Tucker Seidenfarden, who's the editor of, or was the editor of Politica, and the, uh, a left wing um, liberal uh, Danish newspaper, which is highly critical of the Danish cartoons. And Seidenfarden claimed that the cartoons. Uh, insulted all Muslims, and all Muslims were insulted by the cartoons. And Hada responded, that, I'm not insulted. To which Sadan Fadim said, but you're not a real Muslim. <laughs> you're not a real Muslim. Why not? Because to be a proper Muslim in liberal eyes is to be reactionary, <laughs> to find the Danish cartoons offensive, to want to ban the satanic verses or whatever. Anyone who isn't reactionary or offended is by definition, then, not a proper Muslim. And here, left-wing anti-racism meets right-wing anti-Islamic, anti-Muslim bigotry. And it's really, really important to recognize um, where the two meet um, in the middle in that way. Um, for many left-wing anti-racists, opposing bigotry has come to mean accepting reactionary ideas as authentically Muslim. Um, uh, and, and that's really... What, where we get to when we uh, end up with, uh, uh, that's a consequence of a mult set of multicultural policies, the logical end of multiculturalism. What multiculturalists often do is confuse political equality and cultural identity. Equality of cultural identity is not the same as political equality. Indeed, it un undermines the possibilities of any such equality. First, because political equality requires a distinction between the public and the private sphere. A truly plural society would be one in which citizens have full freedom to pursue their different values and practices in private, while in the public sphere, all citizens would be treated as political equals, whatever their differences in their private lives. Today, Pluralism has come to mean the very opposite. The right to practice a particular religion, to speak a particular language, follow a particular cultural practice, is seen as a public good that must be publicly affirmed and institutionalized rather than a private freedom. While our rights to do, write, or even think as individuals has increasingly been curtailed in the name of respect and tolerance. Seems to me that it's time we challenge this quite odious, distorted view of what pluralism and that view that has come to be. Thank, thanks for uh a really stimulating uh, talk, Kenan. So we, we are running late, it's 5.30, so we've got just two more speakers. So we should hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try and maybe have a quarter of an hour at, 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 at the end.